Welcome to the Green Mountain Care Board meeting. My name is Kevin Mullen, Chair of the Board, and I'm calling this meeting to order. Uh, first of all, I want to announce that Board Member Pelham is um, attending to a, a family matter and will not be with us today and sends his regrets. Um, with that, I'm going to um, call on the Executive Director for the Executive Director's Report, Susan Barrett. Thank you, Chair Mullen. Good afternoon. I want to announce that last night we received from CMMI, CMMI um, a written, written response to Vermont's request for a one-year extension to the all-payer model. That response in that letter is posted on our website under what's new. It's also posted the same letter under federal communications. The um, just of the response, um, just a couple of bullets to give you an idea of what they said, and please refer to that letter, is uh, that CMMI is working to offer a one-year extension to the state of Vermont for its all payer, current all-payer model. So that would be for uh, FY or calendar year 23, plus a transition year for 2024, which would be to prepare for a subsequent model. Uh, the, the letter also clarifies the process for finalizing the official extension offer, and it, that includes the federal clearance process, which, according to the, the letter, is likely not to happen until later this year, fall of 2022. And after that happens, Vermont will pursue its internal clearance process, and then the board, our board, will vote on the agreement amendment. So I would refer to that letter for the general public, and I just will um, open it up to the board if there are any questions. Kevin, I have a quick question. Is that okay? Yes, it is. Um, so Susan, I'm just wondering if it would be possible um, thinking about this letter and also you know, where we're going with the extension in the next agreement to invite the Director of Healthcare Reform to come in and talk about some of the strategic directions um, that they're considering. Sure, uh, uh, Chair Mullen, I, I, I can reach out to the Director of Healthcare Reform and see when she's available. That would be great, thank you. And then Thank you. last, you're welcome. Um, lastly, uh, just the the standing ongoing public comment that we've had for quite some time is that the board is currently taking a public comment on a potential next model. We're sharing those comments with our partners at AHS and the governor's office so that they can be informed of the comments as they are taking the lead on the negotiations of that next model. And I will turn it back to you, Chair Mullen. Thank you, Susan. The next item on the agenda are the minutes of Wednesday, April 6th and Friday, April 8th. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. It's been moved and seconded to approve the minutes of 4-6 and 4-8 without any additions, deletions, or corrections. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor of the motion, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed, please signify by saying nay. Let the record show that the motion carried unanimously. So the purpose of this afternoon's meeting is discussion on MVP non-standard QHP plan design. And I understand that uh, Christine Smith and Laura McAllenan are here to uh, present. Um, so whoever is leading that, if you could take it away. Hi, thank you. This is Christine Smith, and I just wanted to thank the board for giving us this opportunity to present this to you. Um, it's something that MVP has been working on um, for quite some time, and we're um, excited to share with you. So I do have a PowerPoint presentation um, that I will share my screen if that's okay. That would be great. Okay. Can you guys see that? We do. Excellent. Okay. So um, we do have a, a proposal for one of our non-standard plans for 2023. And I'm gonna take you through a little bit about um, what drove that decision. 
Um, so we will go through our QHP products and the proposed plan design. And then if there's any questions, I'd be happy to entertain them. <clears throat> so first we ha have our, this is our portfolio today as it stands of our non-standard plans with the March 22 um, membership in it. And the plan that we're looking at um, highlighting in this presentation is our bronze five plan. So as it stands today, we are offering um, all of the standard plans, as you know, plus the catastrophic plan. In addition, um, two non-standard high deductible plans and the one high deductible reflective plan, three non-standard non-high deductible plans and one reflective plan, which only have very small routine changes and we did not bring them to the board today. And then our one revised non-standard plan, <clears throat> which is almost identical to the current plan design with the exception of an increase in the deductible and out-of-pocket max. So what triggered this Green Mountain review is that the deductible and out-of-pocket max that we're proposing has what's considered a significant change of plus or minus two percentage points um, to both the deductible and out-of-pocket max. Um, based on the Green Mountain Care Board's evaluation criteria for non-standard plans, MVP feels that this really hits bullet number five, which is adding value to the Vermont market. Um, our proposed change to the deductible and out-of-pocket max for the bronze five would decrease the premium of this plan by approximately 4.07%. And that's based on the 2022 plan design. Um, actuarial is not 100% sure right yet what our market change is going to be for our premiums for 2023. So it was hard for us to put an exact number on that. Some of the research that we did regarding our bronze members is that um, in 2021 and 2020, our deductibles for the bronze plans were 7250 and 7850. Um, we're proposing to move that deductible up to 9100. And we found that the percentage of members hitting their deductibles in those two years were 5.54% and 6.94%. And what we have found through um, some extensive research and reading some verbatim that we've gotten back from our members is that the bronze membership premium is very important to them. And the lower we can get the premium on a plan, the more advantageous it is for them. They're not concerned about hitting their deductible or out of pocket max they're simply shopping for the cheapest plan they can find. And we believe that by moving the deductible up, we can, we can achieve that goal of, of lowering the premium for our members by, and listening to what they have to say. So here is some of the verbatim pulled right out of our survey from our members. And you can see I've highlighted the words that you know show that they think the plans are expensive, that the premiums are high, there's an exorbitant amount of premium. So we're listening to these members. Cost is the forefront of their dissatisfaction for our bronze members. And our bronze NPS score and our net promoter scores were the least favorable of all of our plan um, scores. And we believe that by making these changes to the bronze five, we can give members a more affordable option. So our proposed plan design, and I just have our bronze one plan in here so that you can see that this is our other offering to the bronze members. But what we're proposing for the bronze five is that we take the deductible and out of pocket max and move those matching um, benefits up to the max 9100 if, if and so that is what comes out to be the, the federal level for the, um, for the for plans for 2023. I also have down here the membership. These membership numbers were as of January. I since re-pulled the numbers um, and the, those numbers were back on the other slide. So our membership in this plan has gone down a very small percent. Um, we don't recommend mapping these members to any different plans. We feel like the Bronze 5 members should stay in the Bronze 5 plan. Um, because like I said, we don't believe that this deductible out of pocket max is gonna make a very great impact on them. And that's all I have. So do I have any questions? Board members, do you have any questions? 
I have a couple of questions. Um, hi, uh, welcome to the MVP team. We we don't see you often, so I did want to just say hello and welcome. Um, uh, could we go back to slide eight, please, if you wouldn't mind? Absolutely not. Let's slide eight. Okay. Okay, so um, I was wondering, so in looking at uh, how many members hit their, did the 7250 uh, or the 7850 deductibles, um, it looks like it's a pretty low percentage of folks. Do you have, and you did give us the average and the median, so it looks like um, for most folks, this change would not have a dramatic impact. Uh, do we have any sense of those who did hit the deductible if how many of those would continue to hit the deduct new deductible or stay under that amount by any chance? Yes, thank you for asking that question. I did I did mean to point that out as well. So what we saw was that um, almost all would still hit the new deductible because it seemed like they were a lot of inpatient visits or exorbitant amounts that put them way above the 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 current out of pocket max and deductible. So thank you for asking that. Well, thank you for the clarification. And then I had a, a question on slide eleven about um, the plan design. So um, I recall uh, quite a long time ago now uh, the plan designs that had the the matching medical deductible and out of pocket max were introduced uh, because it was popular in the marketplace. And so there were a number of folks who were lobbying to get that type of plan design, lobbying used loosely, not in the official sense. Um, what I was curious, because I can't uh, remember the full plan design, is whether for those services that the deductible is waived for, is there a co-payment for those? Yes, so for the items that the deductible is waived for, obviously it's our preventive services, which are covered in full. The yeah. first three PCP visits are without a deductible, but then there is a copay after deductible. And the generic scripts have a small copay, but again, not applicable to the deductible. Right, and do you happen to know what the PCP and the generic script deductibles are, just for context? Um, I could absolutely pull that up for you if you give me one second. Sure. And, and, and I, uh, if you don't want to share your screen while you're doing that, please, you know, no worries. <laughs> okay. Am I sharing my screen right now or do you still see you, the presentation? You are. Well, you are. Okay. We can see your... Um, okay. <laughs> yeah, okay. There we go. Yeah. Thank you. What, what little dog do you have? <laughs> so I have two dogs. I have a wonderfully behaved um, Bernese Mountain Dog, who you do not hear. And I have a wonderfully misbehaved um, Peekapoo, who you do hear. <laughs> Chair Mullen, I actually thought it was your dog because it sounds very similar. So and there she, we go. She is just, honestly, she has been quiet all day. And right now she is saying, why are you in the office in a meeting? <laughs> I want some attention. There's, there's gotta be somebody else in there with you because she can hear you talking. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and I have the door open so she could come in. Okay, so in our non-standard plans um, for bronze five, the PCP copay, oh, I'm sorry. The this bronze five plan is 100% 0% coinsurance after deductible, with the exception of those items. Okay. All right. So that means for those items that they're covered in full until somebody hits the deductible. Correct. Is that right? Okay. Got it. That is that was my recollection about how those plans worked, but I couldn't quite recall. So in thinking about the types, the in general, the types of folks who might buy the bronze five plans, it sounds like it might be uh, assuming a savvy shopper, which we all know health insurance is confusing. So that's a big assumption. But assuming that for the moment, it might be someone who is fairly healthy, is looking for a low premium, might 
want you know wants to keep up with their preventive visits maybe needs to see a, a PCP a couple times a year or has a, a generic prescription. Uh, but in general, it seems like this plan is really designed for that kind of population. Does that is that really what you were going for with this? Yeah, we actually we we think of this plan. It's almost like the catastrophic plan without the age requirement. And in addition to that, I just wanted to point out that we do have the relationship with our virtual partners that members can use our telemedicine program to see a PCP or a specialist if they choose to go virtually at no cost share. So they, you know, they do have that option as well, okay. included in this plan. Okay, great. All right, thank you. Uh, those were my questions. Thank you, Robin. Do other board members have questions or comments? Well, quite a quiet crew today. So with that, I'll uh, move to public comment. Would any member of the public wish to comment on the proposal for the non-standard um, plans under the QHP from MVP? Is there any member of the public who wishes to comment at this time? And I'm going to call on the Healthcare Advocates Office first, Eric Schultes. Hi, Eric. Hi. So um, this, I, you know, this is not something an insurer can fix, but I, I think it's worth just noting um, that if you look at the comments from plan members, three of the four look at the combined costs of um, out-of-pocket and premium. So it is true that cost, quote, cost is at the forefront of their dissatisfaction, but it's not just cost with premiums, it's the whole system. So. You know, I, it's this, again, this isn't something MVP can fix, but it's really dissatisfaction with our healthcare system and the, the narrative that if people are just insured, that's a good thing. I think it's questionable because we want people to be insured, but we also need people to be able to afford healthcare. Thank you. Thank you, Eric. And it's something that uh, has troubled me over the years that, uh, um, we have so much under insurance and yet we're so proud of our 3% uninsurer. So thank you, Eric. Next, I'm gonna to turn to Walter Carpenter. Walter. <clears throat> Thanks, Kevin, and I hope I make sense. I've had COVID all week, so I'm- <clears throat> Oh no. Well, I... Yep. I got it at work where I was <clears throat> serving the public to make those Vermont tax dollars and I got it. Mm. Um, I to back up Eric and then to back up Robin, who pretty much took my were thinking alike with my question. I just would be curious to meet some of these people that MVP took surveys from because every time I hear someone talk about deductibles, it's not in a favorable manner. Deductibles are insurance companies passing costs on to us to prevent us from using health care in order to ensure that their bottom line stays stable. The MVP CEO makes something like a million a year, probably more than that right now. And these deductibles are ensuring that that <clears throat> salary goes up along with their other higher CEOs. So to back up Eric and then to back up Robin, um, I'd be curious to meet some of these people again be, that you surveyed. Um, because no one that I ever talked to, and I work in the tourist business and I talk to people from all over the spectrum, likes deductibles. Basically, deductibles are you're paying for insurance for the privilege of not being able to use the insurance that you're paying for. So I don't see how these plans are going to do any good to anyone. But... Thank you, Walter. Is there other public comment? Is there other public comment? Okay, hey, I'll move back to the board. Does any board member have any further comment or question? Might I ask the legal team uh, when we're expected to make a decision on this? 
Uh, you may, um, may um, this is Laura Belvo, uh, staff attorney, and you may uh, vote on this today if you're comfortable doing so. It was noticed for a potential vote. Thank you, Laura. Does any board member wish to make a motion at this time? I will, um, I'll move approval of the plan design changes. Um, I just like to, and then I'd like to make a, bit, a comment. Is there a second to the motion? Second. It's been moved and seconded and Robin, go ahead with your comment. Yeah, so um, I think from my perspective, the under insurance uh, that we've all spoken about is, is uh, one of the big, biggest challenges that Vermont consumers are facing as well as premium costs. But I also recognize that there's a role in the market which has a number of different plan designs for a plan that essentially operates as a catastrophic. And I do say that one appealing feature about this plan for fairly healthy folks could be that there is no cost sharing for generic meds the three PCP and the preventive care, which may be the types of care that they're most likely to seek. So while I'm not really a fan of plans with deductibles in this range because it it's hard to really, you know, see folks being able to come up with the premium plus that amount, um, I do see a place in the market and I hope that, um, you know, we, we are doing our best to make sure that consumers are picking a plan that meets their their most likely health care needs for any given year. Hey, is there other discussion from the board? Is there other discussion from the board? If not, all those in favor of the motion, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed, please signify by saying nay. Let the record show that the motion uh, carries unanimously. And thank you, MVP. And uh, as was noted, we don't get to, to see you very often. So um, thank you for coming in and presenting today. And uh, we look forward to your um, extremely low or negative uh, rate requests in the future. <laughs> <laughs> we look forward to that too. <laughs> Thanks. So with thank that, I'll ask the board if there is any old business to come before the board. Is there any old business to come before the board? Is there any new business to come before the board? Is there any new business to come before the board? Hearing none, is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. It's been moved and seconded to adjourn. All those in favor of the motion, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed, please signify by saying nay. Thank you, everyone, and have a great rest of the day. Bye.